All right, welcome back to uh, I think the fourth or fifth video talking about Game Maker Studios sound commands. Um, this one's going to be all about using audio groups, which is at this time sort of a, a recent addition Game Maker Studio added on, and I like them. They're uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, they do add one little level of complexity above emitters. If uh, your goal is to be able to turn certain sounds, volumes up and down separately, the emitters, I like them. They work pretty easy. Um, but Audi Group is the way, I guess, ideally, that they want you to do it. But it comes with a little extra work at the very beginning, which we'll walk you through here. So let's walk you through what we do at the very beginning. An audio group is basically going to be a group you set up, you put sounds in it, and now that group or that group of sounds can be targeted with commands. So you could say, hey, everybody in that group, make your volume turn totally off. Or everybody in that group, slowly fade out your sound to 50% over the next three seconds. So you can see how this can work very nicely for separating your sound effects, voice effects, and background music. Just create three groups. So that's what I'm basically doing here. So here's how you set up your groups. You go to resources, you go to global game settings, you make sure you're using the new audio engine, and you go to the tab audio groups. Normally you'll just have audio group default. All the sounds are added to that by default. But what you can do is you can make extra groups. So you see here I've already made a group called AG Music, okay, Audio Group Music, and AG Effects. And I've already put some sounds in. Here's how I'd make another group. I could just go add a group. It's called Audio Group 3. Rename it. And I'm going to put uh, AG Not Used. And basically, there's my group. No sounds are in it. Now, I had made these other groups before. How did I get the sounds in there? All I do is I just go to my sounds, and after you've loaded your sound, then what you can do is down here, choose which group it's in, and hit OK. And so you can see the cannon, it's in the effects, the gun is in the effects, and the alarm is in the effects. And that's it. And that's how you get your sounds in the groups. Now, using the groups. Okay, this is the part where once set up, it's very easy to use. But this is the one part for the beginner that you might find a little tricky. Since the sounds are now into groups, Game Maker, when you start your game, actually doesn't have those sounds available. You actually have to load the group up before you can use the sounds in that group. So that's a downside for the beginner. So let's show you how you can actually load them up. So I have this object called Sound Control, and in its create event, I'm going to load two sounds up. So you'll see here. I have audio group load group music, and I load my group that was called AG Effects. And those two groups start to load. Now, once you've done that, and these groups have loaded all the sounds in, you can use the sounds. Now, of course, the problem that a lot of beginners have, um, you know, if you put some sort of alarm and waited, you know, 30 steps or two seconds, pretty well you'd be guaranteed your sounds are there. And you could just use them. And for a lot of beginners and intermediates, the sounds are good to go. But if you have a really big file for, let's say, your background music file, like I do here in Audio Group Music, you probably want to do something else. Okay, And I'll show you the something else after Okay, what I did. For now, I'll just show you. Let's just assume everything loaded up. Let's use these sounds. So, player presses the space bar. Audio play sound, sound cannon, you know, just like you'd normally play a sound. So this plays it, right? That's pretty good. My thing here in the step event, same thing. Audio play sound, sound alarm, plays the sound. In my background music, same thing. I've actually commented out right now, but audio play sound, sound music, false. Now, that's how you play the sounds, and I've commented out for a reason I'll show you in a minute. Here's my adjusting the sounds. Now this is from a different video. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, uh, you know, I'm going to go over this fast, but you should go see the other videos on this. But sound control, I've done the master under the U key and the J key. So I'll just show you taking down the sound here. I can still control the master gain and set it to the master volume. You know that I reduce when I hit the key. And master gain takes every single sound down, right? Starts to bring them down. You'll see here I've done the background music with I and K. So let's show you K. And here's what I have. And 
This is different from my other videos. I'm actually going to target the audio group to make the sound go down. So you'll see here the command or the script is audio group set gain. So all the sounds inside of the group, AG Music, are going to be set to a volume of global music volume, right? Which I'm adjusting as I hit those keys. And I want this to happen over a time of zero milliseconds, so it's instant. Okay? And this works, right? All the sounds, whether they're currently playing or they're going to play in the future from that group, will now have their volume set to that volume. And of course, the master gain also has an effect, right? But that's the main command on the group. You'll see when I do the sound effects commands, I use the L key to drop it. And I do something very similar here. Audio group set gain. The effects group make all effects go down to that volume. And that's really it. It's a nice, easy way to separate the sounds. And the one thing I like about this over using emitters is if you were going to use emitters to do things like pan the sound left and right across the screen and Doppler effects, you can still use your emitters independently any way you want and then use the audio group to actually control the volume of groups. So, you know, it depends how detailed you want the sounds in your game to go. So, this works. Um, I could give it a test for you, but, you know, it's just going to show the obvious that it obviously works. I'll just show you the background music group working here. So, I'll just drop it down, okay? And you can hear it drops down. Right, no more background music. Pump it back up. And the master volume still has an over master effect right on all the volume. Yeah, never. Now, one thing, uh, the downside of using the load is when you're trying to load in sounds that are large. And so that's what we're saying here that this music group is pretty large. I've actually got this thing here showing us which group is loaded and not loaded. And my debug output here is actually showing me that my effects group is loading. That's my group two. It's actually loading before the background music because the background music file is a bit longer, okay, larger. So what do you do? Well, let's show you this stuff. If I tried doing this with my background music, you see how I commented that out before. If I actually did this right off the create method, this actually doesn't work because this sound music is in an audio group and it hasn't finished loading when this create method is called. That's why I'd actually commented this out. It won't work. I mean, I could uncomment it. You can test it yourself if you want. But there's something else we have to do here. We have to actually make sure that our sound group is loaded before you try to use sounds from it. Now, like we said before, if it's just a group of uh, some small effects, I'm totally happy going, yeah, I'm guaranteed they're loaded pretty fast by the time the player starts to do stuff. But if it's something like your background music that you want to start right away when the loading screen starts and you want some song playing and it's some big MP3 file, then what you want to do is you want to know that this line, audio group load AG music, has finished. Now for beginners, you've probably never heard of asynchronous events. But what this load script does is it starts a loading process. And when the loading process is finished, GameMaker will call an event for you. And that event it calls is this, is asynchronous save load. So that's the event I've added here, right here, asynchronous save load. So it calls this event for us, but the thing is, there's lots of things that could call this save load event. We actually have to do a little bit of work and detect was it our audio group loading and was it actually the correct audio group that's been loaded. So that's what all this junk here is. Not very beginner friendly, but I'll sort of talk you through the basics here. When this event is called, you know that something has been saved or loaded and that process is completed. And what they've done is they've called the event and they've given you a map, which is a data structure that has little keywords in it, keys that give you information. And so what I'm going to do is 
I know from reading the documentation on this that when a sound group load is finished, the map contains two keys. It contains a key called type, which will tell you what type of load is just finished. And it also tells you a group ID, which is what group ID of this audio group was just loaded. Remember, I had two groups. I had a music group and an effects group. What I'm concerned with is, just for a test here, is whether my background music group is loaded. So here's what I do. I use Game Maker's map commands here, DS map find value. The map that has been made for us and given to us in this event is called async load. Okay, I didn't make that up. That's just what it is. That's programmed into Game Maker. And the key is called type. So I grab that out. Then I use the same map that they've given us, and I use the key group ID, and I get the information out of that, and I save it inside of group. Here you see I printed it out, type and group. You can see right here what it's printing out during the runtime, right? Type, audio group load. That's why I know, hey, this was an audio group load um, event taking place here, and group two, okay? So that's the group ID, okay? Because remember, even though I named it uh, AG Music or AG Effects, they're actually just numbers, right, in the end. And here's my little check. So I do a little just printing out for fun there. And then I ask if the type was an audio group load and the group variable is AG Music, then I know the AG Music audio group is loaded. I know it's okay to start playing my sound and so I use the command to start the background music playing. Now the nice thing about this is that this whole event here only gets called when the group is loaded. So, you know, as long as it's the right group with the right ID, you know, it plays my background music. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this for all your sounds, but uh, it's good to do for big sounds. Or if you find you're getting some sort of error description saying uh, group not loaded, well, you either have to set a delay with an alarm, and that delay should be long enough, or you just use this, okay? Use the save load asynchronous event, and it tells you when it's finished. So some of you may not need this, but you know, it is sort of part of the using audio groups, right? You should know a little bit about it. And that's basically the hard stuff, right? But once you've done this, let's say for your intro music, the rest of using audio groups is actually pretty simple, right? All you do, like you saw there, is you can just tell audio groups to set their volume, right, their gain. And then when you make your sounds, just make sure to assign them to an audio group. And you've created those audio groups in Global Game Settings under the Audio Groups tab. All right, so pretty easy. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps you out. It's definitely a nice way to separate your effects, background music, voice stuff, you know and doesn't interfere with your use of emitters or anything else you're going to do with sounds. Thanks for watching. Hope that made a little sense to you.